the American guinea hog. Are they really the perfect pig for the homestead? We'll be addressing that question today on the Grass Fed Homestead. Okay guys, camera's rolling, let's quiet down just a little bit. Quiet on the set. American guinea hogs in many circles are considered to be the perfect pig for your homestead scale production. Here's why. So the guinea hogs are another one of the heritage breeds that we're trying to conserve. They're a really um, docile breed of pig. They graze. Very parasite resistant. I don't know, they're just a really... A really nice breed of pig, really easy when they um, farrow. They do a really good job. They um, are just sweet mamas. This is my oldest mama. I've had her for the whole time I've had guinea hogs, five years. She has great bloodlines. They Their last litters were about 10 and 9. So big litters. Uh, usually I feel like the average for guinea hogs is like 7 you know six to seven and being these are lard pigs so being that they are lard pigs they're not like you know like the bacon hogs or you know there's certain breeds of hogs for certain things but these are an old style lard pig i make uh soaps with their lard i you know make the cooking oils i do yeah i use all of their lard clara Clara. The American guinea hogs are docile, they're smaller in nature so they're easier to handle, they're not aggressive, they're easier for a homesteader to harvest because you're not dealing with a 250, 300 pound carcass, you're generally dealing with something in the neighborhood of 120 to maybe 150 pounds. Belly rub for Clara. There you go. But the biggest selling point with the American guinea hog is usually that they're really light on pasture, they're good at grazing on pasture, and they don't tear up pasture to the same degree that other pigs will. They're not big rooters. It has not taken them long to start rooting. American guinea hogs are not supposed to be big into rooting, but these guys didn't get the memo. And also, they're really easy going on supplemental feed, meaning you don't have to bring in a lot of feed to sustain them. American guinea hogs generally get about a quart of peas and barley a day, whereas standard hog breeds, their feed is generally weighed by pounds, not by quarts. The drawbacks with the American guinea hog though are that one, like we said earlier, they're smaller so you get less of a pork harvest and then two, they take a really, really long time to get to market weight. How long does it take for them to reach market weight? Well, and they will never reach the market weight of a commercial hog, but we usually start butchering them about a year and a half. So it's definitely a lot longer than what is the normal for the commercial hogs, like six months, seven months. Six to months. seven months, yeah. Yeah, these are about twice as long. So, uh, but their meat is amazing. Amazing flavor. Their pork chops, our customers call us, because they're always, um, you get such a, you know, a pork chop is small on these guys, about this big. Uh, but the flavor of the pork chop is just uncomparable. Many of the larger pig breeds are generally ready for harvest at around seven months. Clara here is about 10 months old and you can see she is not much bigger than what you consider a piglet. Clara was the runt of the litter also, so she is just naturally a little bit smaller. These guys right here though were not the runts and they're getting a much heavier grain diet and yet they're still pretty small. These pigs here are much larger than Clara 
but still they are a lot smaller than what you'd expect out of a 10 month old pig. As a quick side note, you can see the conditions in here have gotten kind of gross. We had a lot of snow melt recently and then a lot of rains and then a lot more snow has come in the last few days and it just remelted. So it has gotten really muddy in there and of course pigs are not afraid to get out and get in the mud so they are kind of filthy. I really need to get these guys moved out of here into a little bit drier of a paddock but I really did not expect to have these pigs all through the winter and now through this really wet spring. Now getting back to their size, again these guys are just two months away from that 12 month window and they are nowhere near what I would expect out of a good pork carcass. My friend David here also raised American guinea hogs same time as we got ours last year. David, what was your experience with the American guinea hogs? What were your thoughts? I think my only complaint with them was uh, just the, the, the size of the cuts when we butchered them and did our retail cuts for you know, for our freezer. They were just a little on the small side from what I'm used to getting. Um, the meat was great and um, we never raised hogs before and I kind of overfed them through the summer and they were they were pretty fat, uh, which, which made the butchering process and cutting everything up a lot harder. But the one good thing that came out of that was the amount of lard we got. We got tons and tons and tons of great lard. Yeah, your girls were morbidly obese with several inches of back fat on them when yeah. we were doing the harvesting of them. A lot, a lot, a lot of fat, yeah. So with American guinea hogs, you gotta be really careful with how much you feed them. We said earlier that they are eating about a quart of grain or legume a day, but when you start exceeding beyond that, they're not gonna convert that to muscle, they're gonna convert that to fat. Mostly fat. You can get them to size, in eight months to a year, but you're probably gonna have this much back fat on them. Whereas if you grow them slower and let them get the exercise and graze and stuff and spend the year and a half to two years on raising them, you're gonna get a lot less. I try to keep the weight off of them because they will get obese really quick. So in doing that, you get a better product of you know raising them slower rather than just you know, pushing the feed to them and getting, you know, you're paying to get fat. So the American guinea hog really does have some good things going for it, especially the feed. Only having to give them a quart of feed is really nice. Some of the other pros are a little bit overhyped, so the no rooting and tearing up the pasture thing was a little bit overhyped. They definitely will tear up some pasture. They just don't do it as badly as some of the other pigs. And the drawback with the amount of time it takes to grow them out is a little bit more significant than I had originally thought. So given that, I'm really starting to question whether they are really that great of a solution for the homestead. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. I don't think they are the perfect hog for the homestead, and really there is no such thing as a perfect animal. Are they ideal? Perhaps, I think in a lot of cases they are ideal. I think the American guinea hog makes a lot of sense if you're going to keep breeding stock and always have pigs that are ready to be harvested every fall or spring or however you want to do it. These guys are fighting back here. Chill out guys. So with breeding stock you'd be able to farrow multiple sets of piglets uh, as you need them and that way you can stagger harvest out and always have some that are between that 12 to 18 month window giving you a decent carcass yield. In our case where we're keeping feeders, we're not keeping breeding stock. Our goal was we didn't want to be overwintering pigs. In that case, keeping feeders was not really an appropriate solution for us because they just don't grow enough in that short amount of time to not have to overwinter them. And that left me wondering, are there other pig breeds out there that are really good on a homestead scale, but are a little bit more appropriate to our goals here on our homestead? So I reached out to a few other people in our community to ask them about the pigs that they're raising and if they'll share a little bit about 
those breeds that they have and why they like them. So in some upcoming videos here on the grass-fed homestead, we're going to be featuring those homesteaders and the pigs that they're raising and share that information with you guys. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you can get notifications of when these videos are coming out. Also, you can head over to our webpage, grassfedhomestead.com, and sign up for our mailing list and you can stay informed on different things going on on our homestead. What do you think about American guinea hogs? I think that they're aggressive. You think they're aggressive? Yeah, because that pig right there was grumpy to me and never follows my orders. She didn't follow instructions? Yeah.